I'm starting this off in desktop record because look, it's exactly 9 a.m. I didn't plan that. That's just how it turned out. <laughs> now I need to warm up my voice. <laughs> Hi, hello, welcome back. So today I have an interesting idea that was brought to me by Anglified. Yeah, I kind of remember having this idea for a level ages ago because I remember, I can't remember what level it was, but I remember, I think I was watching a video of Eric playing them way, way back when the Gauntlets first came out. And he was talking about how like one of the levels didn't use spikes in it or something. This is a very, very vague memory. And ever since then, it's something I've wanted to try. I think I did try it like back in 2018 or something, but I, I don't have that anymore. <laughs> and yeah, Anglified sent me a DM about it. So I wouldn't have made this video without him. So it's essentially his idea. So yeah, shout out to him. Anyway, um, <laughs> spikeless. Should I just get rid of anything that uses a hitbox that's red? I honestly might. So stuff like this, you can see this has a blue hitbox. Well, it's kind of hard to see. Hang on. Now you can see it has a blue hitbox, whether something like a spike has a red hitbox, right? And most spikes have red hitboxes of some description, you know, weird sizes. So yeah, anything with a red hitbox, I'm just not going to use, I think. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to get the background color the same. All right, so I guess we better just start making gameplay. Actually, I should pick a song first, probably. <laughs> oh, this is the... That temp level. Oh, it's not Cosmic Cyclone, is it? No, that's a Sonic Wave thing. What's it called? Spectrum Cyclone. All right, I'm going to use a Spectrum Cyclone song because why not? I think this is a good point to start post commentary because I started building kind of like a slow layout for this and I didn't really like it. I was trying my best and then I ended up going for a wave part and realizing the wave is boring as hell with this challenge because you can just do slopes. <laughs> so I ended up scrapping all that, deleting it all and starting fresh. I figured this time I'd go with a bit of a faster challenge rather than a slow one because the slow one was kind of boring. And here is what I actually started building this time. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start here. Let's go straight to two times speed, not a wave. Oh my God, it's right above. <laughs> oh, I immediately want to put like a spike jump there, but I can't do that, dude. Okay, what I can do is just put like single blocks there and then maybe a block above like this. Okay, this is the dumbest thing ever, but it's fine. And then I can put a black orb like that and then maybe have another block like there. And then I'll put a block there so it's like, uh, uh. And then I can have a single block here. How do I, oh, how do I make it so you die if you go here? I don't know, because I want you to die if you land down here, but I can't just like chuck ground spikes down, right? What if I just give you reverse gravity if you fall down here? No, that's not gonna work, because then you can just do that. This is actually difficult, dude. Put red pads and then you like hit the ceiling or something. And then you could just do that, right? And that breaks a couple things. Oh, dude, this is hard. This is really, really hard. Maybe I'm just gonna have to change the way I do this gameplay. So this will have to be like, I'm not gonna use reverse gravity here and then just make anything that kills you reverse your gravity. So I can put a reverse pad like there and that'll basically act as a spike because what I'll do is I can't put spikes up here, but I'll put a roof up here and then just have this cut off like there. So if you hit that blue pad like, that, then you can't survive. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good way to do it. No, I don't think there's any way you can jump in the edge of the- Never mind, I take it back. <laughs> Why can you do that? Why is that possible? Maybe make you mini when you go up here? And then I put like a late orb timing there or something. Oh wait, how do I make that a late timing? I guess put blocks there, right? Ah! Okay, so yeah, needless to say, I really struggled with building this part. I ended up putting a dash orb that kind of goes through this red pad gate here. So when you're in the dash orb, obviously you're not affected by jump pads, but if you're not in the dash orb, then you are. And then I made this really dodgy timing where you kind of release at the last second and sometimes the red pads bounce you up. I don't know, I ended up changing this like way later on. So don't worry, it looks dodgy and looks like maybe you can skip some stuff now. I end up fixing that in the end, but let's just move on to the next part for now. Maybe I can have this be a corridor and then I'll just just have red pads be the things that kill you. If I hit those, right? Yeah, it just kills me. So you have to avoid the red pads. I think that would work, yeah. Hello. And then you go into like a bow right there, right? And then I can just put like a red pad there, have red pads go along the roof here like that. And then have a, uh, I want to do spikes so badly, dude. I was, I was initially thinking of this. That would be like a really satisfying looking gap, but I can't use spikes. And then you go like just a couple yellow pads through here so that if you go there, they just pew, kills you. How did I not hit the pad there? I guess I'm doing another gate looking thing then. So then you fall down here and then go to here where it's like, that is so delayed. I think that's pretty good, yeah. Decorating this is gonna be a whole nother beast, but that's okay. Let's build the gameplay for this ball part, I think. I'm gonna try and do something funky with slopes here. So I'll do like this, and then you go down here, and then you gotta click 
going up to this slope here. Ooh, and that's quite a tough timing. I might actually shift that back, but then put a block on the end of that so that you can click and hit that block and go there. Yeah, that's good. I like that. I like that. So I can shove that down like so, and then put another block on the end. And that like creates a kind of a cool structure in a way. And then maybe the last one, you don't click for it. You just like rockets you up into the air. I think slopes are dodgy on different hertzes though. So I might not do that. Nah, nah, nah. And then boom, like that. Yeah, that's good. And then what I can do is have a structure that just goes up like this. And I think you, oh, you might be able to make that actually. Okay, you still go over that if you buffer it. Do you go further if you hit it late? You do, uh-huh. I could make it so that that is like a structure that goes all the way over here. And then there's like another structure up here that kills you. So if you land on there, you die. But if you click that late enough, yeah, like that. Oh, dude, <laughs> that's such a cool timing. I really, really like that actually. Okay, okay. And then maybe I can have it so you hit this and then go up there and then click that again, maybe. Yeah, like that. Okay, that's cool. And then that allows you to make it over here where otherwise you die. Yeah, okay. I could add a couple like pillars in here. I think that could be interesting as well. And I guess I could... Oh no, I can't use spikes. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> and then you go into another game mode here maybe. I kind of want to do ship because I got some fun ideas for the ship. I feel like it should go into ship like here where it syncs up with music. Maybe it'll have another structure like as soon as you get in there, like here. Oh, look at that timing. Oh, I like that. How the hell do I, I guess I could just do like that, right? Yeah, because that kills you if you land on there. Oh, I'm going to have to extend that structure for sure. But I really like that, dude. Okay. Yeah, like that. So you have to really... Uh, 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 uh. What if I use, where are they, breakable blocks here? And then have like one of these setups like this, right? I've seen this in like old impossible levels or whatever. And then have these. So if you land on either one of those, you should die, right? Yeah, so you can see I landed on that bottom one and I died because of it. So you have to go through there. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. So that's like basically straight flight. And then I'll put a mini portal here and then maybe a black orb or something. And then have you land on a thing down here and then it has a pad here that shoots you up or something. It's cool that I could use breakable blocks. I kind of want to try and use those in other places as well. Maybe I put an orb here instead, so you actually have to click. I'm basically just trying to make like extreme slash insane demon gameplay at this point. Like that's just what I'm trying to do, but without spikes. It's surprisingly difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, and then what I could do is something like this and put a half slab there so that you have to like... Oh, I really, really like that. I could honestly do a blue pad just as long as I don't switch gravity for a while and then I check at the end with a game mode portal. Maybe another one of those breakable block things. Why are the breakable blocks in the half slab section? I can make this a corridor like that as well, which I probably will do in the future. For, this is just for now, right? And then I want to go into a robot section. I feel like a robot section would work. How much? We have nine seconds of gameplay. I'm going to aim for like maybe 15 to 20 seconds, something like that. It's just a challenge, right? Yeah, like that, you can see. I was still like in the breakable blocks, but they weren't breaking for some reason. What the hell was that lag spike, bro? Hello? Okay, I don't need to practice this yet. I'm just playing it for fun. All right, let's go into a robot section here, shall we? What I kind of want to do is using more breakable blocks because I nobody uses breakable blocks enough, let's be real. If you jump too high, you'll land on top of them and then there's like no way to get back down once you land on top of them, right? Like I've always wondered how you can do this in GD. Oh, turns out you can just do it with breakable blocks because once you go through them, you can't go back down, right? Oh, if you go too high there, then that happens. Oh, I like that. Ba -ba -ba. And then maybe you have to hit this late to land there. Bum -bum. And then maybe I can put like a stupidly tight gap for the thumbnail. <laughs> that's a fairly easy gap, but it looks really tight. And that's what's important. Continue this wall all the way across, I think. And then maybe you land on a platform up here that you have to do... Oh, I can't use spikes! I get lulled into a false sense of security for a while. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm going. And then I like, oh wait, I can't use spikes, dude. And then just have this and then that'll go into something else. And then that'll be towards the end of the challenge, I think. I could do a UFO. We could try a UFO. Okay, so the issue with this is that you can kind of just... Do that. <laughs> okay, so for this, I could just put like a slab there. That's fine. No, that's not fine. I could put a slab like there. That should kill you, right? Yeah, so like you can do that, but that's really tough, right? That's hard to do. Chuck a pad there. Ooh, that might actually work. 
Oh, okay, so you can survive that pad. That's really, that's a really hard timing though. Yeah, so trying to stop the player from doing skips in this level was really, really difficult. And in some cases like this, it was just a case of making the skips significantly harder to do than the normal route rather than being impossible. And I kind of like doing this anyway because it makes it more interesting for people if they're, you know, don't find this level very difficult normally. They can challenge themselves by doing a fancy swag route or something. Some people call it a bug and they don't like it, but personally, I think it adds to the gameplay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that portal trick. I think that portal trick is probably the way to go. So that's like bam, 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 like that. I can scale that down and then just bop, 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 bop. That's like very slow fall, I like that. So even if you wanted to jump out, you can't because it's just slow fall. I actually really like that. I think that's cool, okay. I think I'm going to call this UFO part the last part of the level, yeah. Okay, so there's two wrong things about what's coming up. First of all, this UFO part, it was really difficult to get right and I never really got it feeling right. It took me a lot of time and I don't know. But we'll get back to that in a little bit. But also, this UFO part wasn't the last part of the level. I added a short cube part and even a really tiny ship part right at the end as well. For the cube, I just wanted to go with something simple. I did like a corridor type thing, similar to what we did at the beginning. So the red pads would kill you if you fall off the blocks. But also the game play itself was kind of ethereal artifice feeling with those blue orb clicks. I don't know, I kind of like them. <laughs> and then I just added like a straight fly breakable block type deal right at the end because I don't know, I didn't realize how cool that gameplay is. I might actually just start using that in other layouts because I really, really like it. <laughs> it's just a more interesting way of doing straight fly, you know? I don't know. But yeah, so after I put that in, that was uh, basically all of the gameplay done. Yeah. There we go, okay, that was 73 to 100. I'm not verifying this, yes, I still need to decorate it. Still need to decorate. I need to stop you from skipping up here. I don't know what I'll do there, but I'll I'll do something. I could just do dash orbs, actually. Edit special, allow multi-activate, and then just make sure the hitboxes overlap. Well, actually, if I just shift that across by one, you shouldn't be able to get between that anyway, right? Nice and simple for once. Wow, I thought of something simple. All right, I think it's about time we start decorating then. Oh yeah. Again, I'm gonna go with my generally pretty simple challenge decorating ability. Let's go to something we don't normally go for. Let's do these. These things are cool. I like these things. I don't love how these portals don't line up properly, so I might try and scale these down to like 0.6 or something. All right, and then from here, I'll probably just have these outer blocks be just the black blocks like this. Bruh. Like that. Yep. All right. I think that works. I should change the background color to something else though. Let's go for a nice, uh, a nice purple and then it can slowly shift red as you get to the drop, I think. Yeah. So I'll put a background color trigger here. Shift it red over the course of like four seconds as you get to the drop. Drop is not four seconds away. And then I can shift the background to black here when it goes pew. All right, cool. So now let's add a bit of jump orb deco. I automatically just want to go with these because these are sick. Let's go with these and I'll make these P1, which will just copy the color of the background with blending. Maybe add some of these down here. So these are like, they're spikes, guys. I swear these are spikes. Yeah, like that. I think that works. Cool. And then this part here, I could probably do a similar thing. Very simple, very basic, but you know, it's fine. And then maybe because these are pads, I'll put like some cloud objects on them or something. I might just fill this inside with these blocks. I think that would work quite nicely, not gonna lie. And I could do the same for like this section, but I don't want it to be super dark. So even though this is kind of inside of a structure, I could just go ahead and flip this up like this. I feel like that would look a little bit nicer and then have these be like these blocks coming down like this. Skadoosh, skadoosh. And then I can fill the inside with these blocks. Nice, nice. And I naturally want to put like saws in here, but like, Obviously, no. <laughs> so I might just do something like this. Nice little first part. Now I got to do the second part. I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have like these kind of blade looking things. I mean, it's not really a blade, but basically I'll keep this thing in here and then chuck that like that and then just get rid of these and replace them with something else. Yeah, something like that. So some doubled up bricks. Maybe I can double up just a few of them. So it has like a bit of variation, right? Yeah, I think that looks cool. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. I'm going to speed through some of this decoration process real quick because it gets a little bit boring after this, I feel like. I just did the exact same brick design for these little platforms down here. But for these pillar designs, I decided to go with what I use for the quote unquote blade looking thing, which is just these 1.0 blocks. But I put these things on the top just to accentuate the pillar feel, you know? From there, I spent like 20 minutes just playing the level. Yeah, this is kind of a theme. This happens a lot. <laughs> but then after I was done playing it, of course, it was time to copy paste. Woo!
then I decided I'd do a bit of a different design for this middle structure here. And I just went ahead and put bricks on the outside and then put these like nine circles looking blocks on the inside. I don't know what they're called. And then from there, it was time to move on to the quote unquote ground spikes, which I just sunk these dash orbs half a block into the ground like so. And then I used these objects down here and I thought they looked pretty decent. So I put them across the whole thing. And then from there, I just added a couple pulsing sticks and the main design was done. It was just time to do some pulses, which for those, I just did alternating background flashes between this bluey color and a more greeny color, like so. Then I went ahead and added a real quick object color pulse, like this, just to make it an added little pulse. I don't know. And then from there, the part was just about done. Yeah. Yeah, I think that works. All right, cool. Now we need to move on to the ship part. Oh God. <laughs> All right, now I'm really gonna speed through this because I wanted to kind of have the parts feel like they morph into each other while still having their own unique thing. So the first unique thing I did for the ship part were these jewel portals here. I don't know, I thought they could be kind of cool. And they work pretty well as ground spikes because it's pretty hard to survive as a jewel through a part only meant for one player. For this straight fly bit, I didn't really love these breakable blocks being out in the open. So I did build structures around them. And after continuing this design for a while, I decided I wasn't the biggest fan of the beginning of this ship part. I don't know. So I got rid of this like diamond jewel portal thing and then made that just one big structure just to incorporate more of the big structures instead of just having a billion pillars right at the beginning. And I did put more of these like diamond jewel portal things around other bits of the part. So I also put one down the bottom here as well. Oh yeah, also hair dryer ship. I don't know. There's no explanation, just hair dryer ship. <laughs> Do I have no clip on? Hello? <laughs> Thanks for clarifying game. <laughs> Now for the robot part, I started with these brick slopes because I did want to bring the bricks back and also brought back the structure of the first part. I told you I wanted this to be coherent. <laughs> I did a cool design with these structures down the bottom where I kind of had the little bit with the shady blocks sticking out with some bricks below. I don't know, I was really happy with how these turned out, but as a result, all of these block designs had to have an even number in them and just about all of them were odd. So yeah, I had to alter a lot of structures there. Then just as the extra deco, I added these diamond things and these little blocks down at the quote unquote ground spikes. Yeah. I also added these up the top, but I wasn't really happy with them. So I got rid of them eventually. And I changed the background to a nice orange. And then it was at this point where I decided I don't like this UFO part. So you know what? Goodbye. I'm gonna do a thing where you like fit into a bunch of blocks where they have pads maybe. I think that could be quite cool. Yeah, so it's like a timing. If you go straight out of there, you die. So you gotta really like time that, right? How does that work, dude? How the hell does that work? I don't know how the hell that works, but I'm, I'm gonna keep it. May as well. If it works, it works, right? And then I'll put one here and then that makes you go down. So it's like, uh, 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 uh. All right, so the video is getting a little bit long, so I went ahead and actually just finished the deco for the last two parts here. For this last part, it's fairly simple. I brought back these kind of designed structures from the beginning once again. Added a couple more bricks right here and also these little hexagon things going through the middle because I don't know, I thought they looked cool. But then this UFO part, I went for a very interesting design. Once again, having the bricks, of course. But then having these like 1.0 block things kind of, kind of like stalactite and stalagmite feel and things, you know? I don't know. That's just kind of the vibe I got from this when I made it. And I also put some of these like breakable blocks down here just to bring them back in as like some decoration. There weren't many structures to work off this part, so I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do, but I'm really happy with how this turned out, honestly. No spikes used for either of these, of course, and uh, yeah, in terms of the colors, I made this go to pink. Kind of like near what it was in the beginning. Uh, the beginning was a bit more purple, I guess. But it goes to a more pinky color, and then once it gets to here, it slowly turns red until the end, where it just black pulses like that. And I also decided to make these object pulses continue throughout the full level because I do like them. Brings it all together in a way. I don't know. But um, yeah, that is the complete level done. Let me know what you think of just having a cut and just showing you the end result. I don't know. Could be a bit more interesting to mix that in rather than time lapsing and voicing over everything that I do. I don't know. Anyway, I guess it's time to verify this now. I'm going to start with this UFO part here, I think, and try and go from here to 100. Shouldn't take too long. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. All right, let's go from this robot part to 100 as well. Nice. <laughs> this is fun now. Now that I've nerfed it a bit and like altered the gameplay a bunch, it's actually a lot more fun than it was, I feel like. Nothing wrong with a slightly easier level. All right, let's delete all the start pods and let's start going from zero then, shall we? 35. All right, nice. I don't know what my best... Oh, it says my best is 100. All right, whatever. Oh, I hit that too late. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did nerf that orb as well. I've done a lot of nerfing in this level. I don't know why I initially made this like impossible. I am going to go ahead and nerf this ship a little bit because it's a little bit hard. And all I'm going to do to do that is just shift this up a little bit. Just a bit of a nerf, you know, because it's really hard, dude.
<laughs> or the attempt four. Literally attempt four after doing that. Okay, sure. I'm happy with this challenge. I'm very, very happy. This took a lot of playtesting, by the way. I spent so long playtesting this. It's genuinely really, really hard to build gameplay without using spikes. Like, I rely on spikes so heavily. All you have to do is take a quick look at my gameplay to know, like, how heavily... Like, look at this ship part, bro. It's literally just spikes and saws around the place. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this challenge. Thank you once again to Anglified for giving me this idea. Or at least resurfacing it in my brain. I appreciate it. So, let's write out a description here. A challenge Challenge built without using a single spike or saw. I don't know what's more challenging, building the level or playing it. Good luck. So yeah, boom. I'm going to upload that right here, right now. As usual, here is the ID if you'd like to play it for yourself. And uh, yeah, boom, that is the level done. I actually really enjoyed making that. It was once again challenging, but I had a really good time with it. If you're watching this video, give it a go. Why not? I don't know, it's kind of fun. But anyway, I'm gonna end this video off here. Thank you so much for watching. Really, really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, thank you once again to all of the members on screen now, especially Crazy and Mary. And uh, yeah, I will see you later. Oh, yeah.